Thank you for tuning in to the Scenic City Crokinole Classic Finals Match. This is a Tier 1 National Crokinole Association event, and today we have two extremely deadly teams facing off against each other. On your left, we have the Beerling Brothers, eight-time World Crokinole Doubles Champions. Jason, currently ranked 6th, and Ray, currently ranked 8th in the NCA standings. Up against them are the returning 2023 Scenic City Champs. Ron Langell, currently ranked 3rd, and Josh Carfiello, currently ranked 2nd in the NCA. To learn more about these teams, watch our overview video and watch the semifinal matches. But with that, let's get to the action. This finals match will be a race to 11. Langell to open up, coming up short. A hanger opportunity for Ray up the left side. We will see once he moves if he is able to convert. And not quite able. Leaving a tricky situation for Carfiello. He wants to make sure not to hit his own disc off the board. Should be manageable. And we should have picked a better spot for this camera. Carfiello looks like he's fighting for a follow through. Didn't quite get it. Jason now. Very nice. Able to angle in. Demoted both those discs down to the 10. Langell coming up short again, unable to correct from that previous mistake. The Beerlings taking their time to consider options. They are up a 20 and with hammer, but a lot of black on the board right now. Ray opting to stay on the outside, most likely trying to leave that hanger for Jason. See if Carfiello is able to mess with this. And he is very nice. Steals that backboard away from Jason. Jason looks like he might be wanting to play to the outside. Going for that near disc and rolling to his right. Just to keep play away from Ron. He does want to be careful. I'm not sure if he was discussing that he might catch that post. But it does look like he's going to be trying to peel over to the right side. Catches a post closer to Langell, but I don't think there's an easy shot for Langell here. At least not to get into the center. Going for a very thin slice, just barely catches that post. Back down to the five. Beerling's taking their time with the options. Looks like Beerling may have a double here and that'll keep play firmly away from Carfiello. Very nice, but he carves up a little bit too close. No easy chances for Carfiello here, but again, could bounce off a post for a 20. Certainly will be gunning for it as Langell and Carfiello are against the hammer in this round. Catches a post, but not quite what he was looking for. Could be a double here lined up for Jason. Or potentially a touch 20 opportunity. And looks like he was going for it, but may have opened the door for Langell. By the faces they're making, it might be a little bit too far away for a 20 here, but Langell's got to go for it. And very nice, just slides in there. Langell and Carfiello have now balanced out the cup. Still some work to do as both teams are halfway through their shots. The Beerlings with a slight advantage right now. Ray doing an easy takeoff, keeping play firmly away from that 20. Carfiello with a takeout, rolling to the further side. The very least not setting up Jason, who is content with that, but may have opened the door for Langell to angle in here. Oh! That line may have been right, but not nearly enough power to go near that 20. Ray now will be content to... Okay, yeah, he rolls away. Very nice. Little bit risky with uh, getting the off there. <laughs> off a of post, but uh, all worked out. And it looks like Carefield will be going for a bounce back. And ah, doesn't quite get it. That was the move. Lenjo and Carefield are playing against the hammer. The Beerlings with a strong advantage. So, yeah, they need to be hunting for 20s in these last few shots. Jason pushes in a lot there. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but 
Still not anything that sets up Langell super nicely. Langell trying to push further, almost dropped to 20 for the Beerlings, but this all but seals it as Ray bumps one up. Very nice shot. Up at 20 now, three discs on the board. Nice angle in, but all Jason needs, it's already tied. He needs a valid shot to win the first round. The Beerlings go up 2-0 to zero on the scoreboard. We'll see some replays right off the bat. That nice touch 20. We saw nice shots all around the board. Langell and Carfiello just barely behind in this round. It's that final bump up that sealed it. Carfiello put on a bit of pressure with that final angle in, but... Here we are in the second round, Langell and Carfiello to have hammer, but Carfiello going long. Jason now, not sure if he'll go for the touch 20 or just look to not set Ron up. There's been a lot of both defense and offense, at least seen in the first round, so I'm curious to see how these teams will play it going through this finals match. Ray, very nice hit and stick. Not leaving Carafiello much to work with. Carafiello hitting and sticking right in the same spot. Now there's still a lot of shots to go, but there's a bit of pressure on Langell and Carafiello to make something happen. They do have hammer, but they're currently down at 20. So they either need to make a 20 happen, and Langell goes for it with a follow through, but sets Ray up with the backboard. That's the tough thing about a near miss. It's a perfect opportunity like we see there. Ray converts, now up two in the 20s cup. Carafiello unable to correct, leaving a heavy hanger for Jason. Absolutely not a problem for him. Langell putting in work to catch up in the 20s count, drains an open 20. Now we saw Langell in the semifinal round. I think I only saw him miss one open 20 on all of his opportunities, so... We'll definitely see that strength in Langell in this finals match. Carfiello unable to correct, and Jason with a short roll away to the further side of the 15, just not leaving Langell with a lot to work with. The Beerlings up 320s right now. Not a lot of shots left to balance this out. And with that 20, I think the rest of these shots are inconsequential. Now they're inconsequential, unless Jason... Manages to drop this black disc right now, which he doesn't. The Beerlings will be taking the second round, bringing the score 4-2-0. Players taking their final shots. Use this as a time to say, if you haven't seen the semifinal matches, both of those are extremely exciting. I'm a little bit biased I was in one of those, but make sure you go watch them. We see Carafiello here practicing an open 20. Again, shots are inconsequential at this point, so he's just looking to warm up. It wouldn't matter if he went for that red disc. They are losing this round, so Langell taking me off. That round is over. We'll see some highlights from the Beerlings. Just very nice backboards, capitalizing on every opportunity they're given. And Carafiello lips out just ever so slightly there. Jason able to get the off. The Beerlings will have Hammer in this round. And Langell with a hanger, almost able to get it. But not quite. And Ray takes full advantage of that. Very nice. Now, I don't know when it's a hanger like that, if you call it a follow-through or not. But regardless of what you call it, it's a 20. Beerlings now up in the cup. Maybe a second 20 here. Jason rolls away, very nice spot. The only disc Langell can work with to keep playing the center is that inside disc, but it looks like Carafiello and Langell are discussing which one he should go for. Now, if Carafiello has anything to work with on that center disc, Langell might opt to go for that outside. But it looks like Langell will be dealing with this himself. Comes a little bit close. Now, up the right side, Ray might have a 20. And, oh, loses his disc. Unfortunate. Carafiello will be looking to carve in here. And, oh, nice. Drains the angle in from the five. Worth as much as that as Jason goes up in the cup. But, man, that was a nice shot. Langell going long. Definite drop-in opportunity here for Ray. Now up two in the cup. 
Not letting Langell and Carafiello catch up. Carafiello now figured out the open 20s. And we are back to this 20s race in the later stages of this round. See if we can go the full circle. That's four 20s now. And something I've liked about all these matches is we haven't seen a lot of super aggressive 20s races. And Jason comes up short. Langell able to convert. But the Beerling still with an advantage here. Up 120. It'll come down to these last few shots. And Carafiello misses. Jason will pretty much seal it here with that 20. Shots inconsequential now. As the Beerlings will take their third consecutive round. And we see another leaner. Inconsequential. As the Beerlings do take this. We see Ray deal with that very nicely. We see this beautiful angle in from Carafiello. Again, Carafiel and Langell may be down 6-0, but they've been putting up one heck of a fight. The Beerlings have been needing to make some great shots to keep this lead. Players with the open 20s now. Langell and Carafiello will have hammer in this fourth round. And we see the third leaner of this match. We'll see what Carafiello is able to do with this. Not sure uh, he was in the way of the camera a little bit. I don't know if he was going for a follow through or an angle away. Got play a little bit far away. Jason trying to carve in, but leaves an opportunity for Langell, which he capitalizes on. Langell and Carfiello now up, tied in the cup, but with hammer. So considering their options, I figure Carafiello will, will either, if he really likes the 20 from there, we saw him hit one of these earlier, but brings play between the posts maybe a little bit further in than he intended. I think he wanted to stick it right between the posts, but left a touch opportunity, a thin one for Jason, which he was unable to convert on. Ron, super content just to keep play, just between the posts there. If Ray wants a 20, it'll have to be a follow through. Not sure if there's maybe a double here for Ray. He might be able to hit that first black disc and uh, catch that second one as well. But looks like he'll be going for the follow through. Yep, trying to get some push on there, but definitely a touch 20 opportunity here for Carafiello. And we are going to get a full view of this. Gareth Yellow unable to convert a little bit strong. Bounces out of the center. Jason pushing in. Now we've seen Jason in this match and matches before. His follow through power is impressive. And a lot more times than not, it ends up as a 20. There we didn't see it, but yeah. He is so consistent with being able to get it go straight. See a time skip there. The players took a little bit to uh, discuss their best option. And Ray drops a touch 20. Very nice. Carafiello unable to convert. Now a 20 opportunity up the line. We'll see if Jason goes for it. Might be considering how to clean up the board though. Again, the Beerlings are against the hammer. They're up a 20, but a lot of black on the board. So... Landro and Carafiello could still take this round if the Beerlings aren't able to clean up here. Landro and Carafiello taking some time to consider their options. Now the issue is with that red disc nearly posted it and that other black disc in there. Makes it hard to deal with this. Able to get the red off, but both those black discs end up down in the 10. Not the worst for Landro and Carafiello. Still up by 10 points total, but Ray with a beautiful double. Still certainly not out of this for Landro and Carafiello with those two discs on the board. They're still up five points, but the Beerlings definitely closing the distance here. They're discussing the best way to get a double. If they can get a double, they will be in great shape, but as it is right now, from Jason's point of view, that Far black disc is going to be pretty well hidden. Definitely, He's definitely able to get it, but I'm not sure if he's able to get it off the double. 
it's either that or go for a follow through, which definitely wouldn't be a bad option given Jason's expertise in those. Jason doesn't get the follow through, but rolls back to the five, which could be extremely beneficial. Landro and Carfiello now demoted down to 15 points on the board. All Ray needs to do now is to get that closer black disc off and leave his red disc in a spot that Carfiello can't roll in any closer. Yeah, if he stays back there, that could be it. Just needs to make sure that Carfiello isn't able to bring his shot into the 15 region. So yeah, coming from that far side, he'll be looking, that could be close. That could be really close. Now, if Carfiello wants to tie this round, all he needs is to get the off and to stay in the 15, which even there is a little bit precarious. If he's able to catch a post and just bounce back ever so slightly, that will guarantee a tie. But from what I've found, these players don't often like to tie. And especially being down three rounds already, we might see Carfiello go for a 20. Ah, he was trying to stay in the 15, but a bit too light. Doesn't get that red disc off, which means the Beerlings will take this fourth round, bringing the score to 8-0 to zero for Jason and Ray. See this very nice touch from Ray. We see this double. A lot of highlights from Ray in this round. We go into the fifth round now. Full circle around. Landel to open. Beerlings with the hammer. I'm realizing, I'm not sure if last round I said the Beerlings had the hammer. That might have been a mistake. That's my apologies. I'll correct that now. But uh, Beerlings have hammer in this round for sure. Landro and Carfiello up a 20 right now. Beerlings, a little bit of pressure on them. And, oh, another leaner. That's the fourth leaner we've seen. Definitely more fortunate for Landro on this one. Probably happy that didn't drop, but Ray very content just to bump that one in. And Carafiello scores another one right back. Ray didn't get quite far enough away, and we are now back to an open board. Ray taking some time before his shot. That's something I appreciate these top players do. You will not see them rush an open 20. If they feel the need to fully reset, they will fully reset. We are around full circle now. And Ray, the first to come up short. Langell and Carafiello with the 20s advantage now. Carafiello content to keep play away from anywhere Jason can work with it. Jason might have been trying to catch a post there. Ends up between the posts. And Landrill definitely wanted the off there, but at least leaves his disc in an all right spot. There may be an opportunity for Ray to come into the center here. Takes the off. Judging by the uh, body language of him there, I don't think Ray was super happy with that shot though. Now Landrill and Carfiello are in a very good position with play on the far side of the board Jason's just gonna have to keep his disc on comes a little bit close to his own now a double opportunity here for Langell Langell will be content to keep play out here forcing Ray to do the work of bringing play back to the center we'll see if he's able to angle in maybe for a 20 but at least to be able to have his disc in the center Goes a little bit long, leaves his disc in a somewhat difficult spot for Carfiello, but these shots don't tend to be an issue. And yeah, very thin squeeze here. Jason needs the 20 and the off. Oh, so close, a bit too much power. Langell and Carfiello take their first points in this game, bringing the score eight to two for the Beerlings. We saw great board control from Langell and Carfiello in that previous round and defense may be the answer if the Beerlings are on this strong. But that being said, Carfiello and Langell have found their groove in the 20s game and Jason comes up short. 
players confirming it is touching the 15 line, which means it is valid. But Ron very content to just keep playing on the outside. Maybe in a little bit close, Ray may be able to catch a post. Not quite able. Carefiello, a few options here. Looks like he's deciding the best way to get to that inside disc. That or he could stay to the outside if he really doesn't like that. That inside one could be pretty close to a post for him to deal with. So yeah, he goes for that outside. Now there may be a chance for Jason to go through the black disc and promote the red one. Very nice. A bump and run can be difficult when there's only one other disc involved. So that was very impressive. Nice shot from Jason. Now up one in the cup. But Langell and Carafiello about to have two discs on the board. They are certainly not out of this round. And oh! Langell blasts that just a bit too hard. Losing his disc. Ray looks like he did not want to push through. See Carafiello now going for a touch. And oh! Another leaner. I feel like we've been seeing a lot of those believe that's the fifth leaner in this match now. Jason content just to get play to the outside. Again, they're up 20 right now. They are against the hammer, but in good control. And Langell leaves a nice backboard opportunity for Ray up the left side. We'll see once he's moved if he's able to convert. I like the sounds I'm hearing. That sounds like a 20 to me. Ray bringing the 20s advantage up 3 to 1. Up 2 in the cup right now. Garfield, I think he was trying to mess with that backboard there. Doesn't quite get it. Leaving Jason with another 20 opportunity. They might be going for something a little more creative. I think that first black disc is somewhat in the way for a clean shot. So, Jason may be going for... Yeah, that was nice. Oh, that, that better be in the replay. Or I'm having a discussion with the editor. <laughs> Jason and Ray, very much in control of this round now as we come down to these last few shots. As a reminder, this is a race to 11. This isn't the typical race to 9. So, winning this round won't win Jason and Ray the game but definitely put them in a dominant position. I believe shots are inconsequential now. If Ray's able to do some cleanup here, even one disc should be fine. Yep, down to these final shots now. Inconsequential. The Beerlings will take this round, bring the score 10-2-2. Jason going for something fun and oh! Almost a double follow through 20. Yet another leaner. Langell able to capitalize, but inconsequential. The Beerlings take this. We see that beautiful bump and run. We see this shot from Jason as well. And we see this near amazing highlight. The accuracy on these players. And their ability to deal with leaners as well. I find that the leaners can be very tricky and chaotic, especially for new players. But these, these pros know how to deal with them. Landrill coming up short. The Beerlings now just a tie away from winning the Scenic City Crokinole Challenge. Ron and Carfiello are the returning champions. They won this tournament last year. I believe, if I remember correctly, in the semifinals, they beat Ray Beerling and Connor Ryman. A duo you wouldn't normally see. Jason wasn't able to attend, so Ray partnered with Connor, and they had great success, but were defeated in the semifinals. And then Ron and Carafiello went on to beat Philip and Oliver Ware in the finals. If you haven't seen those matches, I, I recommend a little bit of a throwback. Go watch those. Back to the action here. The Beerlings do have Hammer. They're tied in the 20s Cup right now. So in a decent position as Jason keeps play firmly away from the center. Ron with not much option but to hit and stick. Hoping for Carefiello to bring play back into the center. And this may be the opportunity 
as Carafiello has an open door to get to the center now. Oh, blows through at the very least. He doesn't lose his shooter. Jason goes a little bit strong. Landro now with an opportunity to go up in the cup, which he does. Ray shooting right back. This could be close. Oh! Carafiello with a leaner. Jason unable to deal with it. Backboard now for Landro. Able to get it. Landro and Carafiello turning the tides of this match right around. Now up in the 20s cup. They need to be extremely careful with these last few shots. It'll come down to if Carafiello likes the 20 or not. We'll see if he goes for it. He doesn't want to set up Jason. If he sets up Jason, that could be it. Doesn't convert, but leaves a tricky shot for Jason. Taking his time now. Again, Jason and Ray, one tie away from winning this championship match. Jason fighting for the follow through. Doesn't quite get it. Landrell now just making sure not to set Ray up with anything. Ray has a chance to roll in for the tie. We'll see if he's able to get it. Oh, lots of actions off the post. Able to get it in the center, but just five points shy of taking that round. The score will now go to 10 to 4, I believe. Landro and Carafiello now with Hammer as Jason comes up short. Landro with a very nice 20, getting an immediate advantage with the Hammer. Beerling evening out the cup, but Landro and Carafiello now with an advantage. In this 20s race now, Jason and Ray will need a mistake out of the other team, but we see a leaner here. Landro makes short work of that, now up two in the 20s cup. Ray coming up short with a backboard opportunity for Carfiello, which he converts on with a dominant lead. Landrill now to shoot. Right back to Ray, trying to keep up, and another one! I believe we're at nine leaners now. Jeez Louise. Unlucky for Ray. Landro and Carafiello holding on to that lead. They will most likely be trying to get play to the outside. Never mind. Landro saw an opportunity there, and he took it. Ray overcorrecting ever so slightly. Carafiello to go up the right side now for yet another 20. Landro and Carfiello found their groove in this last round, gaining some momentum now. I believe shots are absolutely inconsequential. Yeah, they, they have two shots left. It is inconsequential. Yay, I'm good at math. Merely coming up short. They're trying to get some 20s practice in, but Lando and Carafiello will be taking this round, bringing the score 10 to 6. We could perhaps be seeing something of a comeback here, 10 to 6. which would be quite impressive. Going from 10 to 2, 10 to 6 already. Very great, and we see a bunch of highlight shots from Landrill, some from Carafiello as well. They just cleaned up this round. Could be tough for the Beerlings to shake that off. Going into this round now, not sure what round this is anymore, but uh, be round nine. Round nine, Beerlings with the hammer. All players have found their groove in the 20s now. Never mind! Yet another leaner. Langell not quite able to convert a 20 off that, but Langell and Carafiello do have the 20s advantage now. Up one in the cup. Ray will be fighting to get play back to the center. Not sure if he'll just go for the off or try to follow through. I think he wanted to follow through there, given the power on that. Carafiello, very content. Nice hide. Forcing Jason through Hogan's Alley, which he deals with no problem. See if Landrill just sticks between the posts or doesn't look super happy with that, but looks like a thin opening for Ray to get in. Not quite able. Don't think he wanted to hit and stick. And we are right back to this Hogan's Alley shot. We'll see if Jason can get it two times in a row. Very nice. This is quite the interesting battle we're seeing here. 
Ron coming in. He definitely didn't want to do that. Tried to correct, overcorrect it a little bit now. 20 opportunity for Ray. Little bit off on his angle. Carefiello now considering his options. He wants to make sure not to set up Jason with anything. Doesn't get the off. That could be costly. The Beerlings with the hammer. Only a few shots left. If they get two discs on the board, even, even having 20 points on the board would be enough for them to tie this round and win the match. Goes for a touch there. Very nice assist. Landry will be looking for a way to mess with this. Taking time to consider as we see the time jump here. Not sure if he'll go for a double. Yeah, looked like he wanted a double. Left the opportunity there for Ray, who has a chance now to balance out the 20s cup. Oh, not able. Not enough power there. Carefiello now, if he can score this 20, will solidify the advantage, and he does. Jason and Ray, lots of pressure on them now. We'll see if Jason can get this 20, which he does. Still down to 20 now. Three black discs on the board. I personally don't think there's a lot that Ray can do here. You'll see the player still. Something I love about top tier play is a lesser player would give up at this point. But mathematically, Jason and Ray aren't out of it yet. And if there's a way for them to win, they're going to figure it out. You see Jason suggesting maybe a double and being able to catch that post to come on in. Ah, wasn't there. Ray got the post on the way to the second disc. Carfiello could solidify this with the 20. Leaves it between the posts. Yeah, there's not much at all Jason can do there. As Langel and Carfiello take yet another two points. Bringing the score 10 to 8 now. Langel and Carfiello do have the hammer in this round as Ray bounces out on his first shot. Carfiello could look to get an immediate advantage right off the bat if he scores a 20. Or if he doesn't like it, he could roll away. We've seen the players for the most part being able to make the good calls on that. Carfiello with a very nice roll away, leaving Jason with absolutely nothing to work with. Loses his shooter. Langel now with an opportunity to go up in the cup. Which he does. Yeah, Langel is definitely back on with his 20s now. We're seeing we're seeing the Langel we saw in the semifinal round. And we see yet another leaner. Carfiello doesn't convert. He was definitely going for the follow through there, I figure. But Jason leaves a backboard for Langel, which he's able to convert on. Now up two in the cup with the hammer advantage. Ray has found his range with the open 20. Carfiello bouncing out, certainly not the worst thing. Jason unable to carve in. Probably see Langel, yep, hit and stick. Not leaving Ray a lot to work with. Jason suggesting that Ray angle off to hit the post back for a 20, or at least to keep playing the 15. Again, Jason and Ray only need a tie. So they do have a slight advantage in this round, but lots of pressure on still. As they are against the hammer, down a 20, they need to make something happen or get a mistake out of Langel and Carfiello, which in these last few rounds, they haven't been making a lot of mistakes. So certainly not something to bet on here. As Carfiello takes his time with this shot, he needs to make sure he doesn't set Jason up with anything, which is certainly easier said than done. There could be a thin touch 20 opportunity here, which is what Jason seems to be going for. And, oh, another leaner. Jason definitely frustrated with that one. Wanted to catch up for sure. Ron, following through, opens the door for Ray. And, oh, yet another leaner. Back to back from Jason and Ray. That has got to be frustrating. Carfiello 
definitely following through again. We've seen these players almost every time at Selena. They're fighting for a 20. Jason so close yet again to another 20. Ron. Now, typically he would probably go up the left side, but with his own black disc in the way, he runs a risk of hitting his own off. And if he doesn't convert, that could be costly. So I'm not convinced he'll go for the 20. Yeah, very nice. And I don't think that lines Ray up super nicely for a double. Jason again suggesting the angle off to the post for a 20 to his brother. Looks like Ray will be going for that just at a slightly different angle. Not sure if he sees a double as well. Gets the double. And he definitely got a post but lost his own shooter in the process. If Carafiello can score this, he will guarantee this round. Doesn't quite get it. Beerling needs the off in the 20 to even make Langell shoot. Again, all Langell will need is a valid shot at the most. Jason doesn't get it. He needed it. And Carafiello and Langell have officially caught up as it is 10 all. We see some beautiful shots and we see both these leaners back to back such great attempts from ray and jason just so so close carefiello to open up very nice 20 it is now officially anybody's game and jason with yet another leaner langel not sure if he was going for the 20 there but rolls away to a very nice spot might be forcing Ray to shoot through Hogan's Alley. Man, the pressure is on. Landrum and Carfiello are up at 20, but they're playing against the hammer. And, oh, Ray almost bounces back from the post for a 20. Doesn't quite get it. This also doesn't set up Carfiello super nicely. If he's going for anything, he'll need a little bit of follow-through. Taking time to consider the best course of action he doesn't seem to like the left line a lot so it looks like he'll go up the center and just try to roll away oh leaves a backboard for jason here jason needs this i know it's early in the round but the pressure is certainly on doesn't get it and maybe leaves an opportunity for langel here to get a demanding lead in the 20s cup unable to convert we have somewhat of a messy board now ray will definitely want to be careful that he doesn't take off his own disc he might be looking to leave that backboard for his brother jason across the board and carafiello will be looking for some way to mess with this i believe if he goes up the right side which is what he's looking at he'll be able to mess with that shot He'll just want to be careful that he doesn't accidentally take off his own disc in the process. He doesn't want to mess it up that much. Just enough that Jason isn't left with an opportunity. And I was watching this. I believe they took a few minutes deliberating that. Again, there's no time limit on these matches. And ah! Carviello seems content with that. He did remove his own disc. But that may not be the worst. The issue is the Beerlings with Hammer... If Jason were to take off that black disc and the game were to end here, they'd be up by five points. So somewhere in this round, assuming three discs stay on the board, Langell and Carafiello will need to find a way to demote those discs a little bit lower or to get a double. Jason taking his time. Doesn't get the off. And Langell... Taking his time to consider. I'm not sure if he'll be looking for a double right now. That's certainly what I'd be doing. First thing, but may also just be trying to get play away from Ray. This is getting more and more precarious. Comes into the 15. That looks a little bit too far for a drop back. Or I'd be a little hesitant about it at the very least. 
Looks like Ray's looking at the left side. Or I guess the angle in. Oh! That is frustrating. And I believe that's the 15th leaner we've seen. That would have been huge for Ray. We are halfway through our shots in this round. And as it stands, the Beerlings are down five points. Carfiello wants to be very careful. He's definitely looking to remove that leaner. But he doesn't want to take out his own black disc in the process. Looks like he's suggesting an angle in. Or he might be going for a follow through. Looks like, yeah, he's settled. We'll see if he's able to get it. Oh, so nice. Here's some gaffes from the crowd. You can't see it super well on this camera angle. I suppose you see some people in the background, but most of the participants from this tournament are here watching this finals match. And this is tense. Jason looked like he was fighting for a follow through there. Not quite. And maybe a 20 opportunity here for Langel and Carfiello. They are up two in the cup now. And three red discs on the board. Not quite enough to balance out the 20s cup. So Langel and Carfiello are in very good standing right now. Gets the off, but maybe a little bit close. Ray will most likely be fighting for some kind of drop back or a touch here. The Beerlings need to balance out that 20s disadvantage. Taking a second. And, oh! The 16th leaner of this match. Carfiello going for another follow through. Doesn't get it. Leaves an opportunity for Jason now. Jason needs this. Usually a simple shot, but with so much pressure. Unable to convert. We are down to three shots. Landro and Carfiello with a strong advantage right now, but they need to clean up to make sure the Beerlings can't come back to win this round. Ron looks like he's kind of liking that up the line on his left side to bump up his own can be a little bit tricky that red disc may be a little bit off center and a little bit heavy looks like he'll for sure want to mess with the black disc that's so close there oh not mess with it that much he didn't get the red disc off and removed his own Ray has a chance to turn this round around right now if he can solidify a 20. And he does with the fist bump. That's got to feel good after so many leaners in this round in particular. Carfiello now, he needs to clean up some discs. I'm not sure if he likes a 20 off that closer one. We'll see. Maybe lining up a double here. Oh, got the double but lost his shooter. I think he was definitely trying to go for a 20 there. Or at least to the 15. But with the power there, I'm assuming he was trying to angle in to uh, go up in the cup. But lost his disc in the process. We are down to three shots. Ray and Jason down in the cup. Two discs in the 10. If Ron can get a double here, but it looks so risky. Yeah, he just keeps it back far enough. If Ray can bring it back to the five, I don't think that's possible. And we have a tie round. Bring the score 11 to 11. Jeez, what a close and tight match. As close as it can get. Lando Carfiello with the hammer now. Man, it, it all comes down to this. Here we are, Lando and Carfiello with hammer. Beerlings missed on their first shot. Ray definitely going for an assist. Didn't quite get that one up far enough. Carfiello very content to stay on the outside. Maybe a double here for Jason. He'll definitely want to do some board cleanup. That last round was extremely close. And while it played out in their favor, they probably don't want to deal with too much mess. We'll see if... Langel sees a 20 opportunity here or not. Going for it in just a little bit strong. Leaving a backboard opportunity here for Beerling. 
He gets it. So nice. Carafiello, pressure on to score 820. Taking a second. He didn't like something about his shot there. Resetting, cleaning the board. This, yeah, the pressure builds right now. We'll see going long. We'll see if the Beerling switch to defense here. Oh! Whew. Hot dog. That was a nice shot. Up two in the cup now. Jason playing it cool, but I figure I figure he loved that. Ray now with the 20 opportunity up the line. Oh, didn't go for it actually. Uh, maybe he's leaving it for Jason, but Carafiello will be looking to mess with that. Definitely a line to angle in and bump that black disc. He does it very nice, but may have lined Jason up for a double. That, that third 20 would have definitely been a dominant lead, but having 220 certainly is good right now. It doesn't look like Jason's going for the double, and he's probably not too upset with that. Seems a little iffy. Ron trying to follow through, going a little bit too far. And Ray will be going for that further disc, it looks like. Yeah, very nice. Just keeping play away from Carafiello. Carafiello can bounce back off the post, but certainly not a gimme. We're down to four shots for each team. Jason and Ray set up nicely to just keep play away from Langell and Carafiello. Jason with a very nice roll down to the five. Absolutely nothing Langell can do here. And oh, an unfortunate blunder. Doesn't get the red disc off and loses his shooter. Ray, very nice off. Two on the 20, two on the board. Carafiello needs this. Catches a post and loses his shooter. If Jason can score this 20, they will have won and comes up short. Still a chance for Ron and Langell to tie this round. Now the tough thing is Langell definitely wants a double and a 20 or to hope that Carafiello is set up for a double and a 20 on his shot assuming Ray messes up. So many factors in right now, but Langell and Carafiello are out of it. Oh! Misses the backboard 20, and that all but seals it. As long as Ray doesn't drop this black disc right now, the Beerlings will have won the Scenic City Crokinole Challenge, and they do it. With that shot, the last shot in consequential Jason with his scorecard before the official ending, handshakes around the board. Congratulations to Jason and Ray Beerling on winning this year's 2024 Scenic City Crokinole Classic. That was quite the war between these two teams with a final score of 13 to 11. Congratulations and great work to both teams. On screen, you'll be seeing the upcoming events in the National Crokinole Association Tour. While I don't know all the details of these events off the top of my head, the one I will talk about is the Maryland Doubles Crokinole Championship happening this weekend, October 26th in Maryland. This is hosted by the Charm City Crokinole Club. So make sure to stay tuned for that. If you want to see what the Charm City Crokinole Club is all about, make sure to follow them in advance on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. If you look them up, you'll find all their socials. Thank you again for tuning in. If you like this match, like, comment, share, and subscribe to join the expanding Crokinole universe. My name is Garrett Tracy, and make it a great day.